This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Longtime viewers here know one of my biggest pet peeves in tech is battery life, specifically how battery life is measured on laptops. What number is presented to consumers versus how much battery life does any one device have? Sure, I, as a reviewer, and you, a person who likes to click on videos about laptop battery life, we generally understand this dance. We know that we aren't gonna be getting the stated battery life out of any particular device. The reason it's a pet peeve is because most laptop buyers, they see a number on a box and they assume that's at least kinda right. For example, Samsung Galaxy Book 360 Pro I recently reviewed, it has a stated battery life of up to 21 hours. That's amazing for a laptop, that is just insanely good. But you, you're, you're never going to get anywhere near that. It would be one thing if they said, hey, it's up to 21 hours, but you really should expect around 18. But in my usage, it was more like five and a half, six hours. That's what I was getting, less than a third of what the stated battery life is. And I know what you're probably thinking, hey, Brad, I watched that review. I remember you mentioning the battery life, but I don't recall you really calling out Samsung for lying to us about it. That's because Samsung isn't lying, at least not technically. And also it's important to point out here, it's not just Samsung. Every laptop manufacturer out there is doing the same exact thing. Thing. There was a time when the stated number of hours and the actual number were close enough together that you could just shrug it off and move on. But every year they drift a little further and further apart to the point where we are now where it's just ridiculous. So why is that? I'm going to answer that question, but first... I want to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Squarespace has the tools you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. Whatever you sell, Squarespace has the merchandising features that you need to make your products look their best online. All websites are optimized for mobile devices. Your content automatically automatically adjust so your site looks good anywhere. Grow and engage your audience with Squarespace's email campaigns. Create powerful email content that matches your website with your existing products, blog posts, and logo so your message is consistent and effective. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bragcolbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. To understand why these numbers are so far off, let's dive into where these estimates come from in the first place. There is a standard that is used to measure battery life that every major laptop manufacturer uses. And that is a good thing. If everyone measured performance using different tools, it would be really hard to compare and figure out who is telling the truth and who is just inflating their numbers. The standard that's been set for battery life is called MobileMark. It was created by a group called the Business Applications Performance Corporation, or BAPCO for short. I know I make up a lot of acronyms, but BAPCO is the one. It is an industry consortium made up of companies like Acer, Dell, Samsung, HP, Lenovo, basically laptop companies, because it's in their interest to have a common standard that they can all use. The performance software that they use to test all of this is online, and you can go buy a license yourself if you have an extra $900 lying around. Or you can do what I did and take the cheap way out, read their documentation instead. The test is basically running a video at a very low screen brightness. It starts running that video when your battery is fully charged, and when the battery dies, they record how many hours the laptop lasted, and that's how they come up with the number. What's important to know here is how that specific laptop is configured for the test is not how that laptop is configured when it comes to you and you unbox it. For the test, all network proxies are disabled. Windows isn't looking for updates. OneDrive isn't syncing. The annoying virus software most laptops come installed with, it isn't there. The firewall is disabled. Windows Defender is disabled. The sidebar, any widgets inside of it, they're all disabled. You get the idea. None of those processes are running in the background. It's just a video running. That's it. That's not how anyone uses a computer. You want Windows to be running things in the background. You want it to be looking for new emails that are coming in. You want to be able to see what the weather is. You want your cloud files to sync. You want software updates. You want Windows to be like useful. But for me in particular, in the stuff that I review, I am an illustrator. I review tech for creative professionals and I'm at the far end of battery draining work. Running any drawing app, photo editing app, video app, especially the Adobe Creative Suite, 
that's going to tax a laptop battery far more than these tests show. And also more than even your just average consumer is going to tax it. But even if we're talking about your average consumer, all of those normal background processes are going to be running. Maybe Microsoft Word is running. They're typing in that. Or maybe they have their email app open. Maybe they have a browser with a handful of tabs open. All of those things are going to tax the battery a heck of a lot more than just this basic test. And to Babco's credit, it understands that this test is not the best measure of battery life. And so as part of their 2018 standard, they updated it to include different scenarios. There's a productivity standard that includes some office applications. There's a creativity scenario that includes things like Photoshop and Lightroom, and also a web browsing scenario as well. Now, even though those scenarios aren't designed to be the most taxing, at least they're gonna give you a better idea of what could be done using your laptop in what I would consider a real world scenario. So if these scenarios exist, how come I, as a tech person who looks at this sort of stuff all the time, had never ever seen them until I looked into the documentation? Why are manufacturers not taking advantage of these resources to give us more accurate numbers? Because there is a battery power arms race going on. If you're a laptop maker and you want to give customers a better feel for your product's performance so you show different results, maybe a smaller number using those different scenarios, some customers, like you and I, would probably appreciate that information and it would actually help us build trust with those companies and really tech savvy consumers would understand that but to the customer just wandering through a store why would you pick up a laptop that says eight hours when the other brands out there say 18 hours or 20 hours it would require the entire industry to unilaterally step away from the same standard at the same time because if you are the first to step away from those old standards, you're going to be the one who loses money. I'm gonna use Apple as an example here. Even though they don't use MediaMark as their standard, they have something similar where they're often stating something getting far more battery life than it actually does. So let's say Apple decides to use a more realistic number for a newly released MacBook. They say that the battery life is lower than what they said the battery life of last year's MacBook was. Even if the actual performance had improved year over year, maybe just a little bit, some folks here on the YouTubes would be reasonable and they'd explain why that number had changed. But there would be far, far more people making videos that probably get a name like Battery Gate and people would get a ton of views just hating on Apple because, they can. Apple's always the extreme example of how things can get blown out of proportion, but I could see this happening to another manufacturer just on a smaller scale. What is the answer? How, how do we fix this? First of all, all of us as reviewers need to start calling this out in our reviews. If you're only getting a third or a quarter of the stated battery life, that should be detailed in your review. Also, you as a viewer, you can do something too. You can call this out in the comments whenever a reviewer doesn't mention it. Be nice about it. Don't be a jerk. Don't go be calling anybody a fraud over it. Just politely tell folks that this is important to you and you would appreciate more transparency. I talk to other tech reviewers all the time. We do read the comments. And if I have a video where I see three or four comments in a review pointing something like that out, I, I pay attention. We all do. That's how we improve our work. You can even politely tweet at the manufacturer when they roll out a new product and make these kind of claims. When I've personally directly asked about battery life in the past, the answer I get is usually the same. We measure this the way everybody else does. We just follow the standards. But what's important to remember here is they set the standards they can change the standards. But you, as the consumer, have to push them to do it. And I know, I know this is not high on the list of world problems that need an urgent fix. But I spent years working in marketing departments as a designer, and it takes surprisingly little customer feedback to affect change. It takes a few years to get the standard changed, but right now, nobody's pushing back against this trend at all. And until we do, it's not gonna change. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. If you have any comments, you know what to do. Let me know down below and thank you all for watching. I'll talk to you in a couple of days.